All right, so following on from last month's tech tip video on the Omex rev limiter, the second modification or component I get a lot of questions about is my DIY axle location kit, which I have on this car. What does it do? Why do you need one? Do you need one at all? It's all coming up in this video. So first up, I suppose we better address what the term axle location is actually referring to. So an inherent problem with leaf sprung vehicles like the Capri is that under high load, the leaf springs will want to bend from side to side. Uh, up and down is fine, but side to side, not so much as this allows the axle to move laterally under the vehicle. The longer the leaf spring, the worse the problem as the more leverage the car has on it. The Capri unfortunately has quite long leaf springs, especially compared to an Escort. So this is a pretty big issue. And when I say it's an issue, I mean it's an issue for me personally because of how I drive the car and what I use it for. Which leads us nicely onto why. Why do you want to locate your axle? Well, put simply, performance. This is a performance mod and you're only going to really notice a difference if you drive the car hard. If 90% of the time you're just cruising around, uh, I honestly wouldn't bother with it. I don't think it's worth the time or the effort. But for me, uh, personally, because I use this car on track days, and especially now with these sticky Toyo tires, uh, the axle has to deal with a lot of lateral force during cornering. So this mod really helped stabilize the axle underneath the car, making the rear end much more predictable at the limit of grip. So you're watching this thinking, yeah, okay, I want to locate my axle. What are my options? Well, you've got a few. Panard bars, Watts linkages, you could three, four, five link the rear axle, get it really tied down under there. In fact, before you do any of that, just crawl under the car and check you haven't got something installed already because these first two systems came on a lot of cars out of the factory. My friend Joe, hello Joe, he has a Reliant Scimitar and that thing has a factory fitted Watts linkage. It's a really nice bit of kit. So I text Joe and I said, hey, can you send me a picture of the axle setup that's underneath the Scimitar uh, that I can use in this video? And he did one better. He sent me a three minute long narrated video all about it which he has kindly let me upload to my channel for you guys to see so there should be a link at the top of the screen now click that check it out if you've got time because as far as out of the factory setups went in the 60s 70s and 80s it really does not get much better than that so thanks Joe really appreciate that now back to the Capri and you've looked under there and like me been disappointed with the lack of any axle location so which option do you go for well anything i've mentioned so far will work well the only problem with those is the cost the fabrication work to get them fitted and the parts themselves it's going to be expensive so if like me you were struggling to justify the cost versus the benefit don't panic because there is a budget option and this leads me nicely on to my diy axle location kit and this thing was knocked up out of scrap from the metal pile and the only thing i actually paid for was the hardware so some u-bolts and some generic metric nut bolt combinations i think all in less than 15 pounds so as far as car mods go it was very very cheap okay and here's what we've got going on under here this is often referred to as an a-frame kit you can get an x-frame which basically has two extra bars rearwards of the axle but i went with the less is more approach and went for the A-frame. So what this device is doing basically is adding some triangulation between the axle and the leaf spring. Now if you know anything about structures, triangulation adds strength and a whole lot of it. It makes floppy things rigid, it makes wobbly things solid, it's Viagra for structures basically and by adding triangulation here and here we're making this axle a lot less prone to moving left and right which is what we want and it works, trust me. So what we've got on each side here is axle clamps, we've got leaf spring clamps and then we've got the triangulation bars and these are at 45 degrees to the axle and the leaf spring and I got that by basically measuring from the spring perch from here to here and here to here and making sure those measurements were the same. So let's take a closer look at the individual components here and we'll start with the axle brackets. So these are basically 40 millimeter steel box section uh, and some steel pipe. So the steel pipe I found in the scrapyard, it had a very similar internal diameter as the outer diameter of the axle tube here, so it cupped it nicely. So I recessed the box section and then welded in a section of the pipe. I drilled a couple of holes for the U-bolts and boom, that was it. 
axle brackets. The leaf spring clamps, also very simple, they're just 10 millimeter steel bar cut and drilled to size. Uh, and then the same 10 millimeter steel bar I also used for these triangulation bars as well. You'll notice everything's quite beefy stuff. I figured due to the stresses that this thing was gonna get put under, beefier the better. So that's why it's all quite thick stuff. But that's basically it for hardware. 10 millimeter steel bar, uh, 40 millimeter box section, some steel tube and nuts and bolts. That's it. So when it comes to installing these kits, there's a few things to consider. First up, is your car lowered? Because that is going to affect the fitment of these kits. And that's basically because when the weight of the car is on its wheels, you want these triangulation bars to be level. Now, if you've got lowering blocks fitted like I have, this shoves the axle upwards in relation to the leaf spring. So you need to bring the mounting point at the axle end here downwards to accommodate for that. How far you have to bring it downwards depends on your individual setup. So you'll have to work that one out. But that's what these nuts are for here to act as spacers. So I got those on there and then I put the triangulation bar on and I thought wow with, with this bar so far down the shank of the u-bolt is this gonna bend or break under the stresses of hard cornering it might right so I went and cut another piece of 10 millimeter steel bar drilled it slotted it over the end of the u-bolts to act as a bit of bracing and so far so good so moving on to the leaf spring clamps, just make sure that when you install these, they clear any chassis or bodywork components because you don't want them catching on anything as the suspension moves up and down. And then I'd always recommend double bolting these triangulation bars to the leaf spring clamps. My theory on this is that it will reduce the twisting force that's applied to the leaf spring. That is not backed up by any science, by the way. That is just backyard math, but hey, it's worked so far. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. Bolt it up, torque it down, drive it for a couple of hundred miles, retorque everything, and you should be good to go. And there you go, that's the axle location kit that's on this car and it's been on there for a long time now and I can say with total confidence that it does make a difference to how the car handles. And it's taken a lot of stick in that time as well, you know, track days, these sticky tyres, it's taken it all. Is it as good as a Panad bar or a Watts linkage? Probably not. Uh, it's definitely not as good as a full link setup, but for what it does for the cost, I think it's a pretty damn good alternative. So there you go. I hope that's answered some of your questions about this device. If it has and you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this stuff because I do try and get videos out every month. Cheers. I'll see you for the next video.